Llama sale! Llama sale! We've got big llamas, little llamas. What about medium-sized llamas? No. We don't have those. And llamas on hoodies! All 15% off until midnight on the 15th. The link is in the description. Now, back to the video. My parents were traveling for the weekend, as it was their anniversary, and to no surprise, they wanted to be alone. This meant that I had to take care and be in charge of my little brother, Oliver. Our home and neighborhood were surrounded by woods, and Ollie liked ambling around the trail that was behind our house, but he couldn't go back there without permission. So naturally, since I was 18 and he was 10, I'd have to go with him for precautionary purposes. It was a little while before lunch, so I decided to join Ollie in his trek, so that way my appetite would be in a more salubrious state. It was spring, and the leaves were meager and just starting to grow back onto the trees, which also meant I had to watch out for any sort of dangerous animals that could possibly lurk out and cause harm to any of us. I could hear Ollie sniffing the air, and then him groaning at something. Something smells like shit, he said nasally, as he pinched his nostrils shut. Hey, watch your mouth, I retorted, surprised by the sudden curse. Just because mom and dad aren't here doesn't mean you're allowed to say whatever. I did, however, sniff the air. He was right. There was a smell of rotten meat that permeated my nose. It was like roadkill. I saw what looked like legs by a tree about several yards from us. Stay right there, okay? I instructed Ollie. He nodded in agreement while keeping his hand on his nose. I leisurely walked forward and turned the tree to see what the thing was. It was a deer, and it was dead all right. Flies droned and swarmed around it. I was used to seeing dead animals around here. Hunting was pretty frequent. But there was something that rather took me aback. It was the fact that the way its neck had been ravaged into, it was almost entirely gone and torn down to the bone. A bear would go down to the muscle and stop there, but to the bone? This had to have been from something much more vicious, but what? I looked back to see if Ollie had actually done what I urged him to. He did, but he was peering out to the woods. His eyes, so fixated, were filled with concern and his face unnerved. You okay, bud? I asked, noticing his expression. Something's out there, he murmured as he continued to seem alarmed. I looked to see if he was kidding around. All that was in my view were the trees and brush. It might have been a deer or something. Don't worry so much. Come on, let's go back and get some lunch. And so we did, just to reassure him. I made ourselves some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches as we watched a movie for a bit. Ollie usually liked his sandwiches, and he'd been done with it in a few minutes, but he ate his so sluggishly. I didn't bother asking what he saw, because I figured that he must have scared himself and that he'd get over it in a while. However, the back of my mind was still unsettled by that deer. How could its neck have been mutilated like that to such a grisly state? Night dawned upon both of us, and Ollie was begging me to let him sleep beside me as I put him to bed. What's gotten into you? I asked him. That thing's still out there. It was staring at me. It was dark and big. Bigger than you. I'm sure you just scared yourself. If anything was out there, it wasn't anything dangerous. He continued to beg me, but I kept refusing, and told him to close his eyes and that he'd forget about it in the morning. I laid down in my bed, ready for a good rest. I like keeping my TV on just so I have a source of light in my room. I felt my eyes starting to sag and get heavy as I slowly felt myself growing drowsy. There was a sudden snap from outside. It sounded like a stick being splintered. I figured it was some animal, like another deer, but what would be out at this time of night? My TV was still on, so I decided to watch a little bit more just so I could go back to sleep. Without even thinking, my gaze floated to the window and my heart punched the inside of my chest. There was something at the window. I couldn't see what it was save for the eyes. They were milky and opaque, almost lifeless. 
but they were staring right through me. I tried to make it seem like I didn't see the figure outside, and just roll over onto my stomach and pretend to be asleep to try and advert it. I then heard something against the glass. The thing was scratching my window. The sound was piercing my ears and grated at my nerves. My chest started to feel full as my breath started to shorten. My window was starting to open, and I could hear that thing climbing into my room. Its presence was clearly made as its shadow covered my entire bed in black. I sat there hyperventilating for what seemed like hours until I felt the mattress start to sink in. The springs groaned as the thing had climbed onto the bed. I felt I could literally die from fright right there. The thing started to move across my bed. I was trying my best not to breathe so hard, but I was completely terror-stricken. It then stopped and stood right at my shoulders. I felt its giant feet clasping onto my shoulder blades. I could hardly breathe. I had a mirror to my right that allowed me to see what was above me, and chills ran down my spine. The creature was black, large, and at least seven feet tall and lanky. Its arms went down to its calves. Its chest leaned over me and stretched to an impossible degree. It didn't even look human or animal. It seemed alien. I shut my eyes tight, hoping that it was just some dream. I could start to hear the creature's heavy breaths and growling. It sounded like a dog, but much more disturbing. As it grasped harder, I feared the worst. My ears were ringing. I wasn't breathing while I bit my tongue. My eyes were shut so tight, and the blood flow in my head stopped almost completely. Something then beckoned it off of me, and the creature leapt off. Through my ringing ears, I thought I could hear something like thumps and rusty hinges. I painfully felt the blood flow starting to come back, and I blacked out. Morning came and I had a massive headache now, and my chest felt so tight. I needed to go wake up Ollie and make breakfast, and I reluctantly did so. I went into his room but found his bed empty. I checked all of downstairs to check if he was there somewhere nothing. I then thought of the one place he could definitely be if he was hiding. I went outside and took to the path in the back of the woods. I walked some ways while trying to get over the pain in my head when I saw his bare feet by the tree. Ollie, I said, exhausted and annoyed in my grimace. Come on, what are you- I stopped. I felt my whole entire world collapse as I was bludgeoned with every single negative emotion possible. I put two and two together, and it answered my questions as it brought my distress up tenfold. Ollie was sitting there. His skin was pale. His cloudy eyes trickled with blood, and his neck was mangled to the bone. He was dead. He wasn't lying. That creature was still out there. Hope you all enjoyed the video, and thanks for sticking around. The Bigger Llama plushies are back in stock now. If you missed them before, now is a great time to grab one for 15% off. The sale is on until midnight on the 15th, and stock is limited. Thank you all for helping support the channel.